Hello everyone, welcome to today, the 24th in our series of Virtual Bridge Seminar. Sem seminars? Seminars? That's, you know, it's it's terrible that these things are being recorded because these things are going to stay with me for the rest of my life. Along with, the big, <laughs> along with the big <laughs> blooper reel that we're putting together. L really, it's, it's something to wait, <laughs> watch out for. Um, so today's session, uh, I'm joined uh, by Robert Burns from Dumfries and Galloway College, and I'm delighted that he'll be able to share his experiences of teaching the HND computing science uh, remotely uh, from the college. And, and here he is to share some of his experiences with us. Um, so over to you, Robert. OK, thanks, uh, Kenji. Right. I am never going to follow that um, build up, but uh, first thing I'd just like to say thank you to you for uh, inviting me along. I hope everybody can hear me. I'm going to switch the screen around uh, uh, or grab the screen in a, in a second and take you to a couple of places. A um, couple, of, couple of things though, I have to also say a big thanks to those people that I generally work with on a day-to-day -day basis. and. Um, uh, particularly the, the staff who, because I'm going to concentrate here on HND computer science, I want to say to all the other staff I work with, um, thanks uh, very much because they tend to deliver to me the HND because of the peculiar uh, fate with, our, uh, with us being a small college, I tend to be the only lecturer they see in HND computing. I'd also like to uh, say hello to, to some people who are online that I know and I haven't seen for some time. Um, hopefully I've put there on the screen as well my email address if anybody joins and you actually uh, you do know me or you don't uh, or you, even you don't know me please feel free to, to drop me an email and I'll do my best um, to talk to you. Now I want to move on and just talk to you about the one thing that we've all had to deal with for the last seven weeks which is we've been basically lost that uh, the, the great walls, bricks and mortar, where we go in and we actually uh, work with our students, we uh, see our students, we understand our students, we can read them in most cases like a book, we, we know what they're doing when we say to them, do you understand what we're doing here? And they say yes, and you think, well, no, I don't know that you do, so let's have a little talk about this and let's see if we can make, make sure, or at least reassure me that you know what's happening. So, on the day, on the Tuesday that we finished, um, around about 10 o'clock, I found out that uh, we were, would be leaving the building probably at the end of the day, probably not to return, or at least not knowing when we're going to return, and I think it's probably the same just now. So having the HND uh, at that time and they were in the class, I thought, well, I can deal with a number of things. Now, I'm going to start with a very short PowerPoint of two or three slides. I don't really use PowerPoints. They're not something... I tend to, to work with. The reason I'm using them is because if I go straight to all my OneNote uh, resources, I'm going to, in some cases, accidentally show the student names. And I want to avoid doing that mainly for the purposes of GDPR. So I feel that it's uh, an important thing. You'll see here, this is just a screenshot of Dumfries and Galloway's delivery of the second year HND computer science course. And I know, and I noticed Ian joining the joining this uh, session that you'll see that it very much remains the same Ian, as when it was de designed by in the main yourself and probably with me at that time as well when we worked with the employer advisory group and the students that were on the hnc course and we came up with uh, we came up with this to satisfy all the different uh, interested parties or stakeholders as we'd call them what i'm saying is with the with this particular group they basically, in the main, only see me on a week-to-week -week basis, and it's delivered mainly on a Tuesday and a Friday, two days in there. And you'll see on this, which is the kind of introductory tutorial notebook, and I'll come to uh, one note later on and why I use it so much. Um, I don't know if everybody out there actually uses one note. I know that some of you are probably not computing, but you'll see in there, I've got two streams. Generally on the Tuesday, I call it the uh, administration um stream and we have uh, mainly because it's run through command line administration and on the way on the friday that's the developing side of the course so we kind of have two halves to the course that we run you'll see here on on the websites for multi-platform one i often use uh, on every unit that i teach i leave them with at the end of the the day's class or i publish in advance actually what i'm going to do in the class so they can see and i link everything through on one note Sometimes I don't always achieve what I intended doing. Sometimes we, we often digress and we move away into 
other areas. Um, the beauty of OneNote is it allows me to instantly change what I'm doing. It allows me to catch it up. Um, again, here, if you go back and replay this, you'll see here's the difference that we I now find myself in. That I'm publishing records of work and publishing where I'm now relying on teams. So I don't see the students as none of us tend to anymore. And we're now engaging with them online. So I have to bring them in online. Um, I use Teams. Um, Teams was a, was a product I trialed once uh, a year or two ago now, as I recall, but I, I, wasn't, I didn't find it very effective at the time. There was a few technical issues trying to run it and such like, and, and I hadn't really used it again until I arrived here sitting in the house. But I find now it performs extremely well. And it, uh, one of the beaut beauties of it is it's providing it provides a very good recording facility. I've got them all backed up, all handled by Microsoft. I suspect that Microsoft increased resources into much of their cloud-based apps um, when they realized that the demand which was being put out there. Anyway, looking at that one there, you'll see there's a slight change. Students have had to adapt. We have the team meetings uh, roughly around the time that I would usually um, be timetabled for them. But as I was saying to Kenji early on when we were having a discussion, I find that students now have migrated away from the nine to five that I roughly work and they've migrated more into a much more flexible area. And I find now that I'm not often in place when they're really wanting to ask me a question. And often I open the computer in the morning about 8.30 and there's a whole stack of emails and other Teams messages coming through um, asking me things about programs and other areas of, of their course. So it's an interesting thing as we move online, we need to move away, I think, some way from the traditional working working day. What I'm going to talk about is uh, the thing that's allowing me to work with them is this device here known as the Raspberry Pi. Strangely, I use it across all aspects of the HND course. It actually does two things, and it came about simply because a number of years ago, working with um, a schools group, I introduced the Raspberry Pi with some uh, resource available to buy a few. We bought them and we used them. I used them with that class, basically teaching them Python on a Minecraft background. So they were right. They, what they were doing was trying to develop uh, buildings that could be created automatically once they ran their, uh, their, their programs. And they quite enjoyed it. And it was reasonably successful. It was successful to the point that uh, in the class, it was always quite quiet and they were always working on something. Um, productive. Um, at the end, it was variations in designs. So I'm actually going to click away from here now, having set all that up. But the Raspberry Pi, and just talk about the Raspberry Pi whilst I uh, change round on this one. Um, for those of you who work in computing, you'll, you'll know the Raspberry Pi. It's, it first came into place back in um, 2012, I think, when, I, uh, there when it was developed. It was designed down in uh, Cambridge, uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, mainly to enthuse um, Cambridge computing science students and to be used in schools. But I found it an extremely useful device in terms of um, many of the things that I do with it. Now I'm going to try and pick one of the things I find frustrating with Teams. Hold on, just bear with me. Yeah, here we go. So I'm dropping here into effectively a, a live notebook. I've extended, for those of you who use OneNote, I've extended down all the uh, content library and the teacher areas, which students wouldn't normally see, mainly because below that list, all the student names are appearing and I, and I don't want them coming up on the screen. But here's a sort of typical uh, lesson three, which I do with the uh, students. And it's very technical. It's a technical course. This is from the Tuesday stream of the administration side where we're working in Unix. So you can see the commands and you can see the, the structure there of running in uh, a Unix command environment. OK, one of the beauties of uh, OneNote is that I can draw some little diagrams like this when I'm trying to explain things to the students. I can even have the students, if I wish, by allowing them to come on to their areas, they can provide information as well through the collaboration area. I think when I go on here, I've scored out the names, yeah. So we often do as part of setting up web servers, we set up a lot of virtual hosts on the Raspberry Pis and we coordinate them round through a little BT hub. But you can see here, I've taken the names off, but these have actually all been in inserted, all the information is inserted by the individual students. These are their initials. So I can actually see through the collaboration space. And the point I'm trying to make here is how useful the OneNote environment allows students to collaborate and work together. In fact, 
and I know I won't uh, give anything away on this one here. Um, but I have here, and this is a little bit of work from a, from a student who is working on the Relational Database Design Unit. It's a, for those who teach in computing will know it's a, a two credit unit, it has a couple of accessible areas in it. And uh, this is actually their uh, summative assessment that they're working on. The students are in three groups and I've set up a collaborative area where the three groups can work. They can't see each other's work, but group D here that I'm looking at, I mean, the names are actually along the line there so that uh, I don't call them by Group D, but I've just done that to uh, basically to uh, facilitate this delivery. You'll see in here that they have created a, a normalization design that I can see. They go on to provide into an entity relationship diagram and so on. And it continues on down. In fact, this group's pretty close. Oops, I'll give them the name. I didn't notice that was in there before when I was looking through this. But it um, what you can see is that I can actually go on and see their work in real time. And we're making a huge amount of use of this at the moment. And it's it's particularly good uh, in there. OK, I mean, this whole lot, I mean, my assumption is many of you are using um, OneNote. We also have, and I'm going to just flick through to other areas. Although OneNote's the, the, the one that I've been using since, I think, 2013, um, as I just reshare here. I'll come into, I'm just looking for it. Yeah, okay, here we go. Should be showing you, hopefully, should be seeing my browser at the moment, yeah. We also, of course, have the um, college virtual learning environment, which is, we, we refer to, it's a Moodle-based uh, environment, which we refer to as um, LearnNet. And this is our LearnNet here, and here's the managing a web server one again. What I tend to do here is, I like to use LearnNet as my submission area. Again, computing staff out there who deliver managing a web server should see the should see the commonality here. Of, I've got six assessments that they actually achieve on this one. But I also come down. I do have all the uh, work which you'll find on OneNote. I kind of retrospectively at the end of the year, I tend to just produce PDFs from the OneNote environment and I put it down on in here so that this students on LearnNet have a second backup to it, but it kind of fulfills my requirement to do um, to do that. And you'll notice for those in computing, I want to keep away from there. We do actually install Raspbian. I use a Oracle Virtual Box for that, funnily enough. And that's the only time I use that one because with Raspberry Pis, you're much easier just to get the Raspberry, the Raspbian operating system and then image your SD cards. We've been using bash commands. We've used various servers various um, areas. They're such a flexible little device. Interestingly, when we left on the Tuesday, all bar one student was in the, the building, as I recall, and I managed to agree to basically we've loaned them um, our Raspberry Pis so they can work at home. Not all students needed them. Many of them had their own Raspberry Pis. Unfortunately, one student wasn't in that day. And by the time I caught up with him, we weren't in a position to be able to really get a Raspberry Pi out of the building to him. So he chose quite happily to buy one of his own, but it was quite strange. It was a bit like the toilet roll scenario. They seemed to be out of stock everywhere. But eventually he got one about two weeks later, um, even though I'd looked as well to try and find him, um, find him one for him. OK, a couple of things I was going to show you, particularly with um, OneNote, because OneNote is my main area for developing working with the students, I encourage them to work online. For those of you who've used one, one note, I apologize if I'm doing something that you've um, possibly seen before. Um, I'll wait on this page coming through. Um, my, the machine I'm using is actually quite an old machine and it can be quite slow. Um, currently on the Tuesday part, we're actually finalizing that um, administration side and we kind of tie everything together by, I set them challenges to write bash scripts which uses a lot of the Unix commands and such like, everything they've learned through the part of the year. And they're all currently beavering away on that. Well, they tell me that there's this graded unit thing out there causing them a little bit of uh, mayhem at the moment. Uh, this one here is taking a bit of time to come in just because of adverts, the, the load that's on my machine, I think, at the moment. But I don't know, I'm assuming most people use uh, this extension here, which is really useful when you're trying to create um, material for working with students. I tend to use this quite frequently. I don't think I'm going to be able to properly demonstrate it. But if you haven't um, seen this working before, basically when you come in 
on the clipper, it will allow me to clip the contents of this page and place it into a OneNote notebook where I then have a number of options. The good thing about what I like about it is it will actually acknowledge where it's come from by placing in the URL to recognise the author of the material that I'm looking for. It's coming now. And um, yeah, it's just a bit, a bit slow. Maybe I'll not bother with it because maybe people have, most people have probably seen this in work. But it's actually, yeah, we can't do it. I think my machine's under a bit too much load at the moment. One of the things I find with it is that it's really useful for if I'm working in class and a student shows me a really good resource that they've found. I say, well, let's let's get a copy of that and let's look at it. We can look at it as a group. I can still do that with OneNote because the student's still sending me things. They're still showing me things that are going on, which is really useful. Other things that I use with uh, to great effect at the moment, which has been a, a real bonus, is... Uh, an area such as um, version control. Because we're running on the Raspberry Pi and we do all our Python coding, and we also do the, the PHP and a little bit of JavaScript within there. And even if the students now that they're home don't want to work on the Raspberry Pi when they're coding, they can easily uh, bring this down using, say, Git for Windows. But we rely heavily on Git because Git provides us with the opportunity to uh, use remote repositories. Now, I'm going to actually See if this works a bit quicker for me um, today. And it should, just so whilst it's doing that, let's check what else I've got here. Yeah. So yeah, this will, this will come in here and I've checked this through today and if I actually allow login, I mean, again, for those of you who use this, um, I mean, you could be using GitHub, but for some strange reason, reason <laughs> for some strange reason, I prefer Atlassian's Bitbucket. And generally, I steer the, the classes that I used to uh, set up a Bitbucket account and use that for the sake of the uh, um, sake of the practical work. So the idea being that each of them have a Bitbucket account. They will. We start off actually only with local repositories. We do that for weeks. We branch and we merge, and they control all their programs at various points when they're working through exercises with me. They learn the concept of uh, version control. Whether they're working on the Raspberry Pi, which is where I like to start, because once they've built the MariaDB or the uh, MySQL databases, I like them to um, actually use the Raspberry Pi images that they've been building for managing a web server and such like. So I've got in here um, a little scripting um, remote repository, and um, I was playing with it earlier. I thought I would set it up, but I'm conscious that many people will we'll know all about this and use it. But the beauty here is the students <clears throat> have each of their own ones. They will upload or they will push their scripts up. They will push up their Python programs. They'll push up PHP, everything else they're working with um, for me, the JavaScript and everything that we're doing. And if they, and even their bash scripts, as I've got a couple of bash scripts in here just showing this one. And if they're having difficulty is they can always give me a pull request and I'll pull down the information onto my machine and I can have a look at what they're do doing. And if, as in most cases now, it's just simple things like spelling errors, punctuation, a little bit of syntax problems. But, they, they, you know, I'm, I've actually been very impressed that having moved to here, no longer are they shouting at me or sticking their hands up in class as quick as they would do in the past, but they're now taking a lot more time to resolve their own problems. And I'm actually really... Um, quite impressed by all of them. I think I said that to them the other day that they're actually becoming the problem solvers that I want them to be. So it's been it's been really, you know, in some ways there's there's a real positive to this um, this downside as we've moved on here. One of the things I mean I'm showing a few things in there. I, I'm going to show um, it's not currently online because it's timed itself out. But uh, this is the place where um, I think when Kenji was looking at some work that I sent in for the data science course when I sent in my lesson plan for that data science course. I was talking then about the Raspberry Pi, but what I really wanted to show him when he's online, but it's not such a great thing today, but I'm going to show you um, the Flight Radar 24 uh, data gatherer that I have on the Raspberry Pi, which is sitting no more than a couple of feet from me here on a little dining, on a little table in my uh, dining room. And there's a little telescopic aerial sitting on my uh, window, which is only about, I don't know, maybe about uh, 50 centimetres tall, fully calibrated up and connected through this radar code here through the, um, through the 
Carlisle uh, air traffic control. That's where the C-39 comes from, from Carlisle air traffic control. And it pulls continuously on a normal, when we're in normal times before we encountered uh, this current situation, I would have seen aircraft tracked and aircraft being uploaded probably around this time of day, probably around 10 or 12 aircraft within a sort of 50 mile radius of my aerial, all dragging down data, which uh, as, as Kenji has seen in, in a spreadsheet where I offloaded one minute's worth of an immense amount of data, pulling that down into a spreadsheet. And it shows the tracking movements of basically aircraft coming north, south and south, uh, north to south and south to north in the UK, plus an awful lot of the transatlantic traffic uh, passes over. Earlier on, I had a look and there was a car, there was a plane coming in over right over the top of Dumfries being picked up and its data downloaded. It was on its way from Seattle to Brussels, actually, American Airlines, very few passenger planes. It's picking up an awful lot of um, freight traffic at the moment, cargo planes. But uh, just putting that there, I've now connected to that. This is the same Raspberry Pi now. It's now delivering this version through what we call VNC Viewer. I usually do anything to do with um, the Raspberry Pi. I'm just conscious of the time coming along here. Anything I do in class, I generally use this machine to demonstrate to the students. The students have their own Raspberry Pis, which can in some ways are set up identical to this one. But this one sits here in my house. And I generally use VNC Viewer from the college to come across to this machine. And where I'm writing, I've got two simple scripts in there. And um, one, one of the beauties of this is, I mean, if I wanted to uh, basically, you know, use the information which is on the screen, it's so easy to clip out information from from these areas. I mean, I'm just going to clip the, the command line here. It's um, very simple. Uh, I'm actually using the window. I can do it in many different ways. I can take that out of there. I'm going to just move you on for the final thing I do. I haven't really, I guess this would happen to me actually. Um, I'm just going to drop back into my favourite resource if my machine would just hurry up and I'll come in here. So, yep, it took it back. I generally, when I clip and move information, I generally drop it into a single notebook here where I can clip things. And if I got a clip notes here, Control V should bring across. Yeah, there it's there. It brings across what was on my screen, and I'm, I'm doing this in a very simple way, really for people who've probably never used OneNote before. But you know, now I have, I actually have the commands that I was running on the screen. And if I'd had a whole, even screens worth of commands, uh, which students wanted, I could easily just copy them out. I usually turn the uh, the command prompt on the machine green because that keeps it in keeping with what it looks like when it's on the screen. Can't quite get the correct shade of green, but I do like to just use it. Anyway, through my time, 20, nearly 25 years I've been a lecturer and in various other roles, I've used an awful lot of um, software. I've used an awful lot of different um, uh, quite engaging uh, opportunities. I now come through the web two systems of applications, but I've often realized working with students that one, I like to keep it simple. I like to make sure what I'm using is highly relevant. It's uh, interesting and it's easy for the students to participate with. And that's one note. I ought, has, for me, it has to be sustainable. If it's something, if I'm going to do it and it looks like it's going to be a one-off and it's taking me a long time to be able to get to that final point where I'm going to deliver for, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour. But if it took me five or six hours to get to that one hour, then to me, that's not a sustainable uh, option. And uh, one of the things, and the reason that we're established in Unix and not really in Windows or Linux, and my Unix background from the 1980s, so Unix is quite easy in my mind. Um, it came about because during that time, I worked with the uh, secondary school in Python and Minecraft, the first year HNC, I had them for e-commerce and MySQL, or SQL, it would be using MySQL. But I often used to talk to them about what I was doing in the school because I thought it was quite interesting and it gave me a bit of a sounding board. And a number in the class thought the Pi was quite interesting. What I was doing with Minecraft was quite interesting. And I'd never played Minecraft until I went to that school. And actually, I don't think I've yet played it. I just play around with it. 
And they'd actually mentioned when they came into the second year class and they were starting up, they actually said to me, could this all be done on one of these Raspberry Pis? And I thought, you know what, it probably can. And that's where I, uh, and that's where I took it. So that, that's the reason that we're, we're headed in there. And that's the reason why for three years it's been delivered in the main through the Raspberry Pi. And to some extent, having moved out of the building and sent the Raspberry Pis out of the building with the students, it's made this part here for this particular group, in my mind, probably the, um, probably the best option I had at the time. However, I will be honest, the people who will be able to um, verify that are going to be my students at the end of this academic session. So, but I am very encouraged by the work they're doing. But as I say, a lot of it is due to my existing, co existing colleagues who have not been involved in this class, but have lined these students up for me so that they can uh, work with me when they get there without their effort through the four, five, six and also into the seven course where I'm involved in the HNC, but without their effort in there, I wouldn't have the great students that I get at the eight level or the great students that they've passed through from the lower levels. So I'm very thankful for that. I see that I've come to about 30 minutes. There's a few other things I wanted to say and a few other areas that I wanted to just highlight that I use, but I think I've actually covered most things. It's probably better if people have questions that if you give it. So I'll, I'll return it to you, Kenji, if you're if you're no, okay with that now. No, no, that 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 was excellent. I I I, I generally I love the fact that you assume that what you do is when we were speaking earlier that you assumed that no one would be interested ultimately in what you do and it's not special. But I I just think the the way that you're able to just continue almost smoothly in the delivery of what you do, even even with those setbacks where you can't really see people's faces in a classroom. What, I, I think what you're doing is great. It, it, it really is good. And if if anyone has a question, you're more than welcome. We, we have a couple of minutes just to take a few questions. The, the only two that occurred to me um, as you were speaking uh, to give people a chance to think of their own is do you do students purchase their own Raspberry Pis or do you have a collection that you pass out to them? And is that part of your regular delivery anyway, even if we were going to be in uh, college? Yeah. OK, the second question I'll take first it is part of my regular delivery on that programme. That, that programme is effectively 90 percent work on the Raspberry Pi. Now, there's a lot of reasons why it works for us. One, they see it as a relevant area, Linux. They see that. They, they see it as a very useful one and they, they just enjoy it, I think. On the second one, I don't, we have a, we have a stock now of around 40 Raspberry Pis, which we've been able to use. So I do issue them in class, they do take away, but most of the students, I, I would say most, probably around just over half of them, I think, have their own Raspberry Pis now at home. But of course, they, they know how flexible they are because you can, you can carry so many different images across so many different things. I mean, I have a, I have a third little Raspberry Pi. For those that don't know what a Raspberry Pi looks like, there's a, there's a, a spare one here at the moment, but actually belongs to my youngest son. He was uh, using it up in his hall of residence in Glasgow. I bridged it for him to allow his cable connection to be sent out as a wireless, uh, a Wi-Fi point for him. Uh, I did think that the university would pick up on seeing such a device on the network, but you know what he did too? He did all the way up until he lost his time there. And he didn't actually, if they did know about it, they didn't seem too concerned. Why didn't I just buy a simple little router? Well, why not buy another Raspberry Pi for £30? It's, got, it's sitting here and I'm using it at the moment. So I've got three in the house. So I gained a new one, um, a model, uh, uh, a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. So yeah, it's it's integral to what I do. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, anyone else is free to to jump in. Um, I, I do love the sound of my own voice, so I, I just take the opportunity. I, I was just wondering also with your students and from being in Dumfries and Galloway, do they do they, is this an advantage to them? Because a lot of IT people, a lot of software developers do work remotely. So this experience of, of learning and teaching remotely, do you think this will stand them in good stead going forward? I can't see it being a detrimental to them. I don't see that at all. I think given where where as uh, at the moment where we are and where we're likely to be going and where even working life is likely to be going at the moment, certainly I don't know whether the short to medium, I don't even know what short to medium 
to long term would be classed as at the moment in this environment of us all being kind of locked down and, and difficulties of getting back to, to a working environment where we're all going to have close contact. So, yes, I can't see it being detrimental. I think possibly as as more people have moved online, more opportunities online are likely to come up. So therefore, having skills of, of working online, I'm sure, will, will, will be more of an advantage than we've had before. What I do know is that more than more than half of the students when we were last in are looking to move forward with either computing science, with many of them looking to go into cyber security later on. So, you know, I, I don't know how that, there is a bit of talk when I come on with them, many of them are worried about where, and even my own son who's due to go back to Glasgow in September, I mean, he's he's trying to arrange a flat at the moment. And it, it's obviously quite clear that, you know, that it's not, it's not very, we're not sure where everything's going. Yeah, at the moment, how everything's going to, to start up again. I mean, I, I somehow see him moving up to Glasgow, probably then just working remotely, possibly for some period of time. That could happen. We, we're, we're quite, you know, he's quite aware of that and probably quite looking forward to it. Really, yeah. So, um, yes. Okay. So, so, sorry, another another question, I suspect. Sorry, you were just sharing your webcam, so I, I was an, anticipating you might have a question for Robert. Good morning. Uh, it's Ian Hawker here from Fife College, and it's great to see my ex-colleagues at Dumfries and Galloway continuing the great work that we started many years ago in the HND Computing Science course. I've got a couple of questions for Robert. Uh, Robert, obviously you've used uh, advanced use of OneNote uh, in cloud software previously, and that's been worked with the students while they're on campus. What has actually changed then since moving to lockdown? With what, what new technology or software have you started to use that you were not using uh, with the students in class? <laughs> yeah, hi Ian, nice to, <laughs> nice to see you. Nice, thank you for the question. Always remember that great course is even greater now. <laughs> <laughs> but what am I using? Do you know what? I'm actually not using anything new. Everything that I outlined there, I was already using. So, I mean, I had a list of all the things. I don't really need to go back through them. But one note, as you know, uh, I started working with that. I was looking back at my notes in 2013 not with the class one notes and I've used it and developed it ever since of eight years in one note. I um, teams I did try um, at one time but I never really had much um, success with teams and there's, there's possibly reasons why I, I see reasons now why that might have been but what I've found on the outside of the college working with teams now there's two two things here maybe maybe it's infrastructure that's different or it's more likely I imagine that Microsoft have thrown a lot of resource into their cloud-based operations to handle the current situation. I, I suspect that's what's really helped it. Um, but the use of Atlassian Bitbucket, I've been using that now. This is the second year I've used that for version control. The Raspberry Pis, this is the third year I've based it on the Raspberry Pis. I have, a, there's, there's nothing in there that I'm really using. Teams is the new thing, Teams. But then we're all being forced to either use, to use Teams or use a similar product to Teams. But the college has, our, our, our digital services team have recently emailed and told us that we must use Teams. Um, but I was using Teams anyway, and that's why um, it is part of our Office 365 licensing. So, but yeah, nothing in there. Um, even even using my own home Raspberry Pi that I'm showing you as well, um, I have been connecting to that now for a couple of years as well from, from the college. Um, it allows me to have a consistent, uh, when, I, when I put it into the Prometheans and I can write, that's one of the things I'm not able to show here. That's probably one thing I'm missing is my ability to annotate things when I put them on the board. In the class, I can always sit I can always stand and annotate through the Promethean boards. Um, I do have a I do have a, a tablet here, but uh, which I can touch and such like. But it's not um, it doesn't it's not the same thing, you know. So I, I can always highlight the one thing I learned when when working in the class with students. If I'm writing on any of the notes in one note, the students know it's important. <laughs> That's one of the good things. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, and it allows you to focus. You can highlight everything. You know, I can draw circles around it. I can even when they submit things into their own dedicated private tabs, which I can't show you today some, through the class notebook. I, I'll go in there and put little ticks and little smiley faces on things just to um, just to keep them happy and show them that you know I'm looking at what they're doing. I'm you know encouragement and everything else. So, but as you know, Ian, yes, OneNote is uh, probably the main deliverer that yeah. I rely on. 
Okay, so just, 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 just for our, our recorded uh, viewers who are watching this via the recording and not live, um, sorry, you can't join us on the day, um, but thank you for joining us. Uh, we run sessions from Tuesday to Friday um, every week, and hopefully you'll be able to join us for a future virtual bridge session. Thank you very much.